I really believe there's no place that we can make people more welcome than the church. I think that we're all willing to give everyone another chance. I think because as long as God's given them mercy, then certainly we want to give them mercy. So I want to be quick to give mercy. I want to be quick to forgive because I want to be forgiven. And so the way that we do things is the way that we're going to be blessed of the Lord in return. Have your Bibles like to stand and turn with us to Luke chapter 9 and verse number 22 for our scripture setting tonight. Luke chapter 9 and verse number 22, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. Then he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the shall be saved. For what is a man's advantage if he gain the whole world and lose his soul or be cast away? I want to preach from this title tonight. Um, you have what you tolerate. You have what you tolerate. Let's just pray. Lord, we love you. I pray that you'll guide our steps. Help the word of the Lord. Thank you for everyone that stepped through these doors tonight. God, I pray that you can minister to every heart. I know your word is God, what seeks and saves, and I pray that it can seek and save here tonight. In Jesus' name, we thank you tonight. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. And so, um, Jesus uh, is, is giving us an invitation to follow him, and it's an invitation to come and to die. And Jesus is setting uh, the, the standard for what he would uh, tolerate. Thank God. And it was nothing less than just a total commitment. So you are to be, um, to take up your cross daily. And it's an everyday thing. There is a, a crucifixion that needs to take place. And God will accept nothing less. That's what his bar is. That's what his level is. That's what he tolerates. You know, death is the, the least um, thing that um, we want to talk about, you know. Uh, death is, is not a subject that we enjoy talking about. Matter of fact, we don't even like to call it death. We just say that, you know, they, they passed away or they crossed over Jordan or they are no longer with us or they kicked the bucket or they're picks, pushing up daisies because death is so final. And it's kind of one of those things that is kind of hard to grip with, uh, get a hold of. But the, the symbol to, to follow Jesus is a cross. And the instrument, uh, the cross was an instrument of torture. It was a, a place where that represented death, it represented suffering. And in Jesus' day, uh, death on the cross was the, the worst way to die. It was a, a cruel way to die, and it was a public humiliation of the person that was being crucified. It, and, and every once in a while, while uh, the Jews were in um, captivity, uh, under the oppression of the Romans, there would be a band of Jews that would rise up and just believe that God was going to use them to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Romans, and uh, they would start a rebellion, and the Romans would come in, and they would put down the rebellion, and once they had uh, captured all of the people that were rebelling against them, the Romans would crucify those involved in the rebellion, and sometimes crucifixion would be as much as 2,000 people being crucified, and they would just line them up on the the road that people had to walk down and all along that road would be all these people that were crucified it was kind of a thing that you know this is what happens to people that try to come against Rome and so it's a very brutal dictatorship or, or empire that was ruling over the, the Israelites and so in Jesus's day it was a common thing for people to die matter of fact they said um, at sometimes it was hard to even find trees to make crosses out of because there were so many people that were being crucified and Jesus chose that as his method of death. Jesus could have died any way he wanted to. He chose the cross. He chose to take the most cruel type death because what he was fixing to do at Calvary was going to become the symbol of everything that he was. And the cross became a, a mark. It became the example. It became the place where that we knew that um, suffering had happened where that he invites us to understand that this is what I want, is I want you to be willing to die for me. 
And so there are a number of scriptures that let us know that, um, that if you follow him, there's going to be some times that you just have to submit and that there's a cost and there's a price that you're going to pay to follow him. Luke chapter 6 and verse number 22 says, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from um, their company and they shall reproach you and cause cast out uh, your name as evil or the son of man sake because you live in for God there's going to be people that's going to persecute you and not like you uh, first second Timothy 2 3 and 12 says this concerning um, us yea and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. In other words, uh, don't be surprised when you find people maybe trying to persecute you. And of course, we probably the worst persecution most of us will ever experience in America up at this point. Maybe later it might change, but it's just some verbal persecution or, or some ridicule or all of that. Philippians 1 and 29 says, For unto you it is given uh, in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. So I ask you, really, uh, when you think about your cross and the cross that you're taking, um, how much suffering really goes with your cross? If we never have to um, tell some, uh, or never have to tell our flesh no, then we're not suffering very much. Part of the, the crucifixion is cr learning how to crucify your, your flesh. And God, if you never have to uh, start stand against the majority because of what uh, the scripture says and what the majority is saying, thank God, then you really don't know what it is to suffer. Thank God, the Bible says that, uh, you know, we, we are to be willing to seek first the kingdom of God no matter what others are doing. And you have to stand true to the, uh, your personal convictions even when uh, it's not ex popular, even when it finds you being put... Uh, into some fiery trials because of standing up for truth. Uh, we, are, we have to uh, understand that um, whatever we tolerate, that's what we're going to get. If we uh, tolerate people um, putting us down and we don't take and don't stand in things, then, then we're going to have ourselves being um, put down by those around us. It is true in every area of life. Parents who uh, tolerate their children talking back to them, their children being disobedient, eventually will reap an adult that uh, doesn't know how to respect authority because they were never taught to respect um, authority. And so it is true in uh, the classroom, the teacher that tolerates sloppy work and call, lets the kids um, um, miss their assignments and all of those things end up where that those students aren't able to pass the exams and the things that they need to do because... Um, we have to be careful. Our culture has tolerated things so long that now they have become the norm of our society. And so today, tolerance means everything um, is okay. It means that uh, every belief system is okay, that you should accept people no matter what they do or how they do. They got it. And if you stand for anything, then you are considered intolerant because the tolerance of our world is that everything's okay. And so now we are living, we're getting... Uh, what tolerance has brought us and that's a culture that has no morals and no absolutes and everything uh, is just uh, whatever you want to do any way you want to think about it that's okay one of their favorite uh, scriptures is where that Jesus tells the a woman that was caught in adultery and they were going to stone her to death and Jesus condemned all of the ones and said well whoever's without sin cast the first stone and so they love this scripture and Jesus said neither do I condemn you but uh, conveniently, they forget that there's more to that scripture than that. Not only did Jesus say, neither do I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. And so Jesus met the woman where she was. They got uh, stuck uh, in a, a life of sinful, in a, a very sinful lifestyle. But after meeting him, they got, she didn't stay in that lifestyle. Uh, Jesus said, go and sin no more. They got, she, her, her life was changed because Jesus would not tolerate or let her tolerate sin in her life anymore. Somewhere, uh, whatever you tolerate is that's what you're going to get. Like if you tolerate yourself to have no discipline, no um, um, strong uh, 
integrity in your life, well, then you're going to get the result of that type of a life. But if you will have strong convictions and you will uh, have things that I'm not going to tolerate that, I'm not going to tolerate this, that's what your life is going to begin to reflect. Jesus loves the sinner, but he condemns their sin. And that sin is not welcome in heaven. And sin is not welcome in the church, but the sinner is welcome in the church. Thank God the sinner is um, what we're reaching for. And that's the way that uh, we are. That's why we're here today is to seek and to save that which is lost. And so as clear as you, uh, as our world gets further from God, God's will, thank God, ourselves will have to stand more and more uh, alone. We'll be more and more um, set apart. We'll be more like the three Hebrew boys when uh, they uh, were commanded that everybody was going to worship the false god. And uh, the three Hebrew boys said, you know, we're not going to bend and we're not going to bow. God never promised us that when we take a stand for things that we would not have to go through some fire furnaces. And so I don't know what kind of experiences that some of you have had to experience because you stood for truth and you made up your mind that, I don't care what everybody else does. I don't care what the people on the job do. I don't care what anyone else does. I'm going to do what is right. I'm going to seek after God and please Him. And so as we seek to find our way uh, through a culture that has lost its way, and God, we have to be careful that we don't let our flesh begin to dictate to us what um, it wants to do. Jesus uh, makes it very clear what He wanted us to do in Mark chapter 8 and Verse number 34, he said, And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. Or what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul. It's clear for, to, to follow him, you're going to have to deny yourself. Every day you have to choose to obey um, either the, the spirit or the flesh. The flesh will never do right and never give you right counsel and the spirit will always be directing you in what is right. And so every day you have to crucify your flesh, thank God, and understand that I want to hear what the Spirit is saying to me. So to do God's will, thank God, your will has to die. Jesus made it clear that following Him meant taking up a cross and dying uh, to your own will and to your own ways. And so when Jesus called us to follow Him, thank God, He was saying, take up the cross. So it's a willing act. You have to choose to take it up. Thank God, it's your choice, but once you make that choice, it is the instrument that you are to understand that I want to daily walk with Him. And so it's to daily pray, it's to daily be in the Word, it's to daily be seeking His will. And when I got to this part of my message, as I was preparing my message, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, thank God for all the daily habits that you have, and it's just a way that you've crucified your flesh and you have become accustomed to doing those things. Thank God. But the truth is, now that cross is just a very convenient cross. But all too often we have, you know, settled for just this convenient cross. Whatever your, um, I guess, mark of being a Christian is. You know, all of us have what we feel like when I'm doing this, when I'm doing what I should be doing, this is right. I feel like I'm pleasing God because I'm, I'm doing these things. And that's my cross. You know, I take that cross up every day and I bear it. But I wonder tonight if maybe, and I know in my own spirit, I was impressed that, you know, maybe it's time to look at a different cross. Maybe I have chosen this cross and I bear this cross and, and, and many people admire you for it and they're impressed with the way that you live your Christian life. And, and many times people, when they hear how that you serve the Lord, uh, you know, you're faithful to church, thank God you live a holiness life, uh, you are happy to be a Christian, you're happy to be living for God, um, you know, they, they, we feel uh, uh, complimented by the way that we're living. But I wonder if maybe even as saints of God, sometimes we just get a convenient cross, a cross that we don't mind bearing, a cross that we are used to bearing. But maybe every once in a while the Lord said, I think it's time to get another cross. I think it's time to go a little further. I think it's time to crucify your flesh again. 
Praise God. But there are times that, that God wants to, uh, the cross to get bigger, and uh, maybe it's for you to, um, you know, be more concerned about um, a friend. Maybe it's for you to be able to carry a burden for someone. I, I think that as a church, I believe that God wants us to make a difference in the neighborhoods where our vans are going. I think that we want them to be impacted in such a way that when they see that church van, they're going to say, that's the church that loves us. That's the church that cares about us. That's the church that's investing in us. Somewhere, I want to make a difference in those neighborhoods. As you, as an individual, it's time maybe to reach for others, maybe to teach a Bible study, maybe to bring someone to church in your car. Praise God. Maybe to pick up some kids that um, maybe get your back seat a little dirty or whatever, you know. And, and But yet and still, it's a soul and you need to be reaching for them. Visit the sick or go to the nursing homes or, or knock on some doors or, or have a family over for supper. Thank God. There's all kind of ways that we could just kind of get a, a different cross that we can just make up our mind. I want to do more. Thank God. What more could we do to show the, uh, that we are are really concerned about every soul that walks through those doors. What way can I make people know that, hey, we're glad you're here and, and we want to help you to find what God has for you in your life. And so uh, it, it will mean uh, getting out of your comfort zone. It'll mean feeling after uh, um, doing some things that you're not comfortable doing. And that's when I think you're really getting your cross. I think as long as our cross is easy to bear, uh, we don't mind doing it. Thank God, I don't mind coming to church. Thank God, I don't mind praying. I enjoy praying. I enjoy coming to church. I, you know, and so I'm really not, it's not really a very big sacrifice, is it, if you're enjoying it? I mean, a cross is not something that you always really enjoy. It's a, it really is something that causes your flesh to say, no, I don't want to do that. Thank God, next week will be a good time to crucify the flesh a little bit because the flesh is already telling you, well, you know, you really don't want to do that. You know, you really, how bad it is. You know, how hard it is to fast. You know, how hard it is to be on that Daniel fast even. I mean, even though you're eating uh, every day, it's still, it's not like uh, steak and, and Krispy Kremes and all the things that you really enjoy. So uh, that's just a little crucifixion that we can, can do. But uh, look, the, the hardest part of carrying your cross is what Paul said, I die daily death is something that um actually happens you know i really die out to something my flesh wants to go here my flesh wants to think there my flesh wants to do this and then i crucify it and say no nope, you're not doing that that's kind of what that daily crucifixion that paul said i die every day there are things that if i let my flesh do what it wants to do thank god I will, i'll sleep in if i let my flesh do what it wants to do I'll neglect prayer today. If I let my flesh do what it wants to do, I'll not read my Bible today. I'll, I will kind of compromise some things because my flesh says I'm tired or I'm whatever, you know. What, you know your flesh. You know your flesh better than anybody else. Thank God. But the cross represents, um, you know, something special in our lives. The cross that represents defeat to others. To the follower of Jesus, it represents victory. That cross represents pain and suffering to the world. But to the follower of Jesus, it's the image of healing. It's the image of hope. Because I know that if I stay on the cross, good things are going to happen in my life. The cross that represents death, thank God, for the follower, it represents, it's the image of life. Because he said, if I die to my flesh, I'm going to get real life. And so when... Others see the cross as something bad. The follower of Jesus sees the cross as something good. The cross may not be attractive to the non-believer, but to the follower of Jesus, it's a beautiful thing. When I see the cross and I remember what it did for me and where the cross has brought me from, it causes me to cry out, praise God for saving me. And so thank God for the cross. Thank God. And so there is a place where the, the cross can really give you joy. Matter of fact, Jesus, when he looked at his cross, the Bible says that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus understood, hey, there's a price that's got to be paid to atone for the sins of the world. But the joy is going to be as I see sinners coming and being cleansed and forgiven, that there's going to be joy in heaven over every soul that repents. And so sometimes you got to see the cross as the way that I'm going to find joy. There is a joy 
and just knowing. Paul said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. I want to I want to really know him in this fullness. I don't want to just take the easy road, but I want to know him in the power of his uh, resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. While we're standing tonight, you know, the cross that um, represented death, praise God, represents life to us. Thank God. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, cursed is the man that dies on a tree. But when we think of the one that died on the cross, thank God, we don't think of a cursed one, but we think of a blessed one. We think of the one that purchase life and that more abundantly for all of us we are promised that if we will endure until the end we're going to be saved if we will walk with him if we will bear our cross if we will follow him take up our cross and follow him thank god we're promised that thank god good things are going to be waiting for us that there is a crown Thank God, we're going to trade the cross for a crown. We're going to step on streets of gold. We're going to enter into his presence. Thank God, it will be worth it all when you see Jesus, when you step into his presence. Jesus was, um, you know, tolerant of nothing less than taking up a cross and following him. Thank God, if we will go, he will go with us. If we will suffer with him, we're going to reign with him. Psalms 30 and 5 says, For his anger endureth but for a moment, and his, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I'm telling you, God has a joy for everyone that's here tonight. If you're a sinner, if you've never known him through the power of the resurrection, he's inviting you to just come and enjoy his presence and to be cleansed from the past and to be brought into something new. Psalms 126 and 6 says, He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his seeds with him. We're on our way to a great and wonderful time of harvesting for the kingdom of God. And it's going to be a rejoicing time when people begin to come around these altars and begin to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And tonight, uh, there could be joy if there was just one soul here tonight that would just say, hey, I'm ready to get it all right. I'm ready to get it all fixed. Thank God. One repenting person, thank God, brings joy to heaven. Thank God. One person being baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, brings joy to the kingdom of God. Thank God. I think we all need to just understand that it's time to get a fresh vision of our cross. I don't know what cross it is that he wants you to bear. But I think every one of us need to make a fresh commitment to the cross. I think it'd be good if you need something tonight. Hey God, why don't you make your way around the altar? And if you're just a child of God and you just need to maybe look at your cross and just see if maybe I've got too convenient of a cross. Maybe it's time to just begin to look at a, a heavier cross. Maybe it's time to begin to look at a deeper commitment. Uh, maybe it's time that I just say, God, I want more than just... God, the routine. I'm ready to break out into something fresh. I want a deeper depth. I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. I want to know you in the fellowship of your suffering. Let's just gather around the altars tonight. Just worship.